So we've now got two distinct methods available to us to control our window parameters in our in our model here. So we've got the, the native Honeybee tools. Those are great. Those work fantastic. Um, those, though, are built around the NFRC protocol and the Energy Plus modeling protocols, which are not really going to work well for us on the PHPP side. Right? The PHPP, the Passive House Planning Package, uses a kind of different method of input, requires a set of different information from us. And so we've got another set of tools here that we can use inside of Grasshopper to configure and set up our glazing and our, our frame values, and, and we can apply those to apertures inside of our Grasshopper scene. So for sure, absolutely. Um, however, as I said, I'm not... Um, in most of the projects that we work in, I prefer to enter information in a different fashion. I've already sort of said this several times. I like to enter this type of information back in the Rhino scene for a lot of the projects that we are working on um, for all sorts of different reasons. And so let's take a look at um, at the the tools that we have available to us to do that uh, in this in this case. So for the moment, I'm going to um, minimize my minimize my uh, grasshopper scene. And let's go back to our Rhino scene. So I'm back in the Rhino side now. And if you remember back in the Rhino side, we had our individual, we had our window uh, objects uh, or our window surfaces. And um, um, we had our, our basic uh, wall geometry surfaces. And if you remember, with our basic wall geometry, we if I come up to my Passivouse Tools ribbon here, we had a tool, this Set Surface Params tool, which allowed us to apply information like assembly types and names and all of this sort of stuff to our, to our, our geometry and then pull that information back out in Grasshopper. And that's great. So can we do the same thing with our windows? Yes, we can. So we have another set of tools here which allow us to do basically the exact same thing with our windows. So let's take a look at that now. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just select one window surface. So I've got this one window surface selected. And if I wanted to apply information or parameters to that surface, the way that I would do that using our new Passivouse Tools components is to come up here to the Passivouse Tools toolbar and come over to this Set Window Params tool and click on this. And when I click this, we get a little dialog box that comes up here, which is going to allow us to set things like the frame, the glazing, variant type. So we'll get into that much later when we look at um, how to use the variance worksheet, uh, the Psi install type, the installation depth, as well as the install edges. Uh, we'll, we'll look at that in a second when, or in a, in a little bit when we look at um, shading. So this will become important when it gets to shading, um, as, as well as, of course, um, application of Psi install values. So a lot of information that we can assign here. So we can set this for all of these individual window objects um, uh, as, we, as, we, as we go along. So that's great. So if we take a look at our download, our list here for different frame types, well, we have nothing. So the first step before we can do any assignment to individual geometry is to build up our catalog of glazing and frame types. So let me cancel out of this. Let me cancel out of this tool. So again, before we can apply anything, we first need to build up our catalog. And we're going to do that just as we did before. Come here to my um, Passivouse Tools toolbar and go to my Component Editor uh, Library tool. And if I bring this guy up, remember this tool we looked at in the last video, we looked or last uh, uh, section, we looked at how we can enter or build our catalog of construction types here in the Rhino side. Notice down below that we have uh, the same kind of input for things like window glazing and window frames. So we can build the same kind of catalog of pieces. So for instance, if I want to add some window glazing, I could come in here and I could enter the information directly. Or as we talked about before, I can always come down here and import that information from a PHPP file. So if I want to, I can always point to this library at an external PHPP and harvest or pull that information in. 
So you can work with it either way. I'm going to just go ahead and enter the information directly here um, because we're only working with a little bit of information. It's just as, as easy. So let's enter our window glazing here on the Rhino side. So I'm going to come in here to the window glazing, come to the name, and we were working with, what were we working with? SGG Climatop, Climatop 1. And that had a U value of 0 0.5 and an SHGC of 0 0.4. No, sorry. 0.37. So we can add, and if we need to add more, we can just come here and add a row. Uh, so uh, we can add our window glazing in exactly that fashion. When we're happy, I'll come down here to OK. And now when I come to this window set window params tool and I set window params, now when I go to my select set, select glazing, notice that that SGG climate top one shows up on the list, and I can now apply that glazing to this surface, and if I hit OK, it applies. Uh, what is, what's it actually doing? Well, just as before, if I come over here to my properties and I come to my user attribute text, notice that I now have a bunch of information which is hosted on this object. Glazing type, SGG Climate Top 1, install depth, uh, install types, we'll, again, we'll talk about those, and then object name. Note one thing here, object name is coming up as a series of hashes. Well, that's just because we haven't named the object. So if I was to come back to my basic object properties, come over here to name and enter this, I call this Ed's window. And then if I was to go back and take a look at my attribute user text, notice it's now coming up as Ed's window. This is actually, object name is actually a formula that references back to this object name. Now, Ed's window is not a very good name. Notice on our CAD drawing here, we actually have some names indicated. Um, it's useful, I think, for PHPP to have individual names for each window element so that later on, when we're looking at the PHPP, we don't see a bunch of big, ugly, random names. Uh, instead, we see the actual window names. And so if we're um, trying to identify the performance impact of individual glazing elements, we have them cataloged by name. So having a unique identifier name, I think is really helpful. So I'm gonna come in and put the name in. I'm gonna say South Window, Floor One, Window One. And hit Enter. Notice that's the sort of naming convention that we have here. So this is South Window, number one. This is South Door, Floor One, Unit One, South Door, Floor One, Unit Two, etc., etc. So okay, we could go through and name all of our name all of our components. It's probably a good idea. This is south door, floor one, unit one, and this will be south door, floor one, unit two. This will be south window, floor one, unit two, and then this will be lastly here, south window, floor one, unit three. And okay. So we've named all of our, our elements now. So that's good. At least, at least those will, what well, we'll see in a minute, those will show up in the PHPP, which is good. And we have set the glazing for this individual surface. So, so the only thing we've set here is our glazing. We're going to come into the attribute user text. We've set the glazing type, but we don't have any frame type. Um, uh, none of that has been set. So let's, let's build our frame as well. I'm going to come up here to my Passwise Tools toolbar, come to the Component Editor library, and instead of the window glazing, now I'm going to come down here to the window frames. And what were we building? Opti, opti win uh, purista. And what were we? 0 0.92 for everything. So I'm going to copy and paste. Um, this is, uh, yeah, so I've, I've got to do some updating here so that you can like use the tab key to move between them and all that kind of stuff. So we'll hopefully by the time you're actually using this tool, it's a little more functional. Right now you have to like click on each one, which is obnoxious. Whoops, uh, 0.94 and 0.076, no, 0.76, is that right? Let me bring up the, let me bring up our, let me bring up our spec sheet again, just to make sure that we are, 0.76 and 0 0.94, 0 0.023. Okay, good. All right, side G left, 0.023. Copy that, paste that in. A lot of data, a lot of information. And lastly, side install. Let's just use a default 0.04. Um, that'll be a good 0.04. That'll be a good default value. 
there. So, okay, there we go. We've got all of our information entered now for our different U values and face widths and psi values. And once I'm happy with that, I can say OK. Again, of course, we can always import all this from Excel um, if it's easier to do it that way rather than enter the data here by all means. Let me say OK. And now when we come back here, select our window, go up to our Set Window Params tool. Now under my Select Frame, notice that it shows up as OptiWin Purista. So that's great. I can now set these. Um, one other thing I might want to do is just for, for now, go ahead and set this to variant type A. We will come back and talk about variants much later on. So for now, we can just leave that set to A as the default. Um, notice that you can you know, have a, a, a series of different types that you can apply. And then for the Psi install type, let's just leave that blank for now. Um, again, we can come back and fill that in um, at, a later, at a later date. So I'll say OK. And as soon as I do that, notice I now get some new information here uh, for this element. All right. And what about the rest of these guys? Well, let's go ahead and, whoa, don't do that. Let's go ahead and select, drag a selection box around them, and let's apply the window params for all of them all at once. And let's just go ahead and hit our Optuin Purista climb top one and set it to variant type A, say OK. Now, that's not really correct, though, is it? These uh, lift and slide doors are not purista frames. Let me bring back the pre purista frame. The purista frame is just a just a just a typical tilt turn window. Hmm. Okay. Well, so really we should have a different frame type for these uh, lift and slide doors. So let me bring up a let me bring up that guy and what is that? That's this one. Let me, let me bring up this spec sheet here for hmm. uh, there it is yeah so here so we have another spec sheet for a different product here and this is our lift and slide door and this one was just known as the motura and if we were to come down here in our spec sheet, again, this is just the PassiveHouse certificate from the PassiveHouse database online. Um, this is the type of data that we would want to get. And notice here we have a lot more data. Top, side, uh, top fixed, side fixed, bottom fixed. So we have a lot more data here for these for, for these units. So um, I guess let's, let's build these quickly. Uh, let me see if I can do it this way. Let me pull this off to the side here. Let me see if I can get it set up so that we can kind of see all of this at the same time. Uh, again, not a lot of screen real estate here. Do it this way. Okay, so uh, let me come in here to my pH tools and come into the library. And let's build our constructions here, or let's build our, our elements here. So in my window frames, I need to add a row. And so this will be my opti win motura. And in this case, I'm going to have a left and a right. So the, the left unit is going to have uh, operable, operable, and then um, it's going to have the mull on the right-hand side. So the left unit is going to be our operable one. So we've got our our uh, our top operable, our side operable, our threshold operable. So they're kind of spread out in this um, this list here. So it's a little a little confusing, but it's okay. So let's let's say top frame width of 87. So the top operable is uh, 87 millimeters. So 0 0.087. The side operable, um, the left side. It's going to be 0 0.098. Again, I'm just sort of pulling the information off this list here. The threshold is 126 millimeters. So the bottom here is 0.126 meters. Notice this input is in meters, of course. Um, and let me make this a little smaller so we can see here. There we go. Uh, and then the right-hand side is our mullion. So here's our mullion. And the, the total width of the mullion is um, 100 millimeters. We want to take half of it for this uh, operable panel. So the right-hand side here is going to be 0 0.05. So half of 100 millimeters, 50 millimeters, etc. OK, so that's fine. So now we need to input our frame width. So the top is 0 0.92. So 0 0.92. The, the left-hand side is going to be 0 0.7. 
the bottom is going to be 1.11, and then the mullion is going to be 1.26. Okay, uh, and then I suppose we ought to put in our uh, psi g values as well, our psi glazing edge values. So the top is 0 0.024. 0.024. The left-hand side, the operable side, is 0.025. The bottom, oh, excuse me, the bottom is 0.023. And then the right-hand side, the mull, is 0.025. And let's go ahead and put in 0 0.04 for all of our psi install values. Again, we can come back and update those at any point. We haven't done any psi value calculations yet, so we'll add those in. So there's my left unit. If I was to say, okay, come in here and select this surface, come up to my set window params, come down to my frame, I could now set this to the OptiWin Motura left. Say, okay, and there we go. Now we should do the same thing for the right. So let me just real quick do the same thing for the right. Um, and so we'll come down here. I'll say add a new row. This will be my OptiWin. Opti, OptiWin Motura right. Okay, and so this will be my fixed unit. Notice the right-hand side, that's my fixed unit. So the left is going to be the mole, so the frame width is going to be half of the half the mole. The mole is 100 millimeters. I take half of it that goes to the left and half to the right. The right hand side is going to be my fixed element, so that's my side fixed. So 0 0.09, 0 0.09. Uh, the bottom is going to be my bottom fixed, so that's 43. <laughs> that's very small. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, 0.043, and then the top fixed is 87. So that's more believable. 43 millimeters, that's really small. Um, okay, so let's do our U-values now. Uh, left U-value, left U-value, what is the left? Oh, the left is emollient, 1.26. Okay, the uh, side fixed, the right side, 0.54. It's pretty low. Okay, 0.54. The bottom uh, fixed is 1.14, and then the top fixed is 0 0.66. And let's finish up here by putting in our psi g values. So psi g left, that's the mullion, uh, 0.025. The right side is our side fixed, 0 0.022. The bottom is, this bottom fixed is 0 0.025. And the top fixed is 0 0.023. And then again, let's go ahead and just put in 0 0.04 for all of our psi install values. For now, as a default, we can come back and set those at any time. Okay, that was a lot. That's a lot of data to input, obviously. Let me just reset there, all right. It's a lot of data. Say OK. And now I'll come in here and select my right hand unit. I'll come up to my set window params and I will set this frame to be OptiWin Motura right hand side. Same glazing. And I'll say OK. And there we go. That's a lot of data. So you can see, I think you can probably begin to see why I like to do this in the Rhino side. If I was to Go back here for a second. If I was to have all of this in my grasshopper scene, I'll have all sorts of components and tangled spaghetti all over the place. I like the idea that this is all embedded in the Rhino document, and it's been applied to the window element, and I don't have to see any of that. I mean, I can always, I can always select it, and I can come over here to the user attributes, and I can see what frame has been applied. I can see, I can see all of those application um, parameters, but I don't have to see all of those connections live in my grasshopper scene, etc. Right? It's just going to be a much cleaner, um, in my opinion, it's going to be a much cleaner uh, uh, solution. 
Again, if you were doing something where you were like testing 10 different frame types or something, sure, maybe you want to do that in Rhino. Maybe, it maybe that makes a lot more sense. Um, uh, for a lot of the projects that we work on, uh, we're not doing things like that. And so for us, it's more about parameter management and information management. And so again, I, I like to do it in the Rhino side tool. But we've shown you several different options here. You can use any of them that you prefer for the types of projects that you're working on. So how does this, lastly, how does all of this data get into our grasshopper scene? Well, let me bring up our grasshopper scene here. And let me, un, let me unlock the solver. And let me come over here. And it's quite straightforward. In fact, we don't have to do anything. I'm going to go ahead and select my custom frame and custom glazing objects. And I'm going to delete them out of the scene. And now all we have is the geometry with all those parameters assigned, my honeybee aperture object, and then my PHPP aperture object. The PHPP aperture object is smart enough to reach back into the Rhino scene and harvest all of that information from that window geometry. So I don't actually have to do anything else inside of my grasshopper scene. It can stay just like this. I don't need any other components or anything else. These guys can just uh, sort of live here as I guess I should leave the live here as a pair, just like our just like our others. So this is a sort of um, you know a sort of coupling. Uh, they work together, and all that data should be flowing through into our PHPP at this point. We can verify that by coming over here and go ahead and hit. Uh, or turn on our PHPP. And once that has spooled up, we'll give it a second to spool up. And once that has booted and we have our PHPP, let's take a look at what we've got now in our windows and in our components sections. And as soon as that has written out, notice we have a bunch of new frame components that have been written out, all of our information, our Purista, our Motura left, our Motura right, they come up with these names uh, with all that all that intricate data that we input back in the Rhino side is all flowing through, and of course they are being applied to the right windows. So let me just adjust this a little bit. Here are our two doors. SD notice notice first of all that the names are flowing through. So the names that we gave to the objects back in Rhino are now flowing through into the PHPP. So I can tell which window is which in my listing. So here's my south door, floor one, unit one, and it has the Motura left frame applied. And then south door, uh, floor one, unit two, has the Motura right frame applied. So all that data that we encoded in Rhino is all flowing through basically automatically. Notice in my grasshopper scene, I don't have anything more than just a couple of these, these few components. Right? So all of this is being done automatically sort of in the background by this PHPP apertures component. Um, of course, as I said, if you want to come in and you want to set up, you want to set up uh, custom glazing and frames in Grasshopper, by all means, we have components for that. But um, again, I, I think it's cleaner and, and in many cases a lot easier to host that information back in the Rhino side. But again, whatever works best for you. And the process for the rest of the windows is going to be basically the same. So you're just going to go through and build all your windows and assign the right parameters to the objects there, um, and then bring them in, reference them in into our grasshopper scene. The one, the one thing to keep in mind is remember we have two thermal zones. So um, uh, for these upper windows, make sure that you're applying them to the second floor thermal zone. Maybe I'll, I'll record a quick addendum after this one um, and just um, sort of do that really explicitly. But hopefully that makes sense. But I'll, um, I'll show that really explicitly in the next, uh, the, the next video. We'll come back and do a real quick one for that because I know this has been a longer, long one. So in any event, I hope that all makes sense. We now have an awful lot of control. Let me go back to our PHPP for a second. An awful lot of control over everything around Windows. We have just modeled all the geometry explicitly. Um, we've set all of our names. We've uh, hosted it correctly in the right, the right surfaces. We have control over the glazing, control over the frames, control over the variants, control over the install situations, et cetera, et cetera. So um, all of that hopefully allows us to get exactly the right data into our PHPP for our certified passive house projects.
So as I said, I'll come back and record a very quick uh, follow-up to this where uh, we'll just model together the second floor units and just to just to make sure that everybody's uh, on the same page when it comes to um, you know how to host the windows in the right the right place. So I'll see you back for that one um, if you feel like watching that. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video and we'll turn our attention to the TFA and interior spaces of the building.